using this for Italian wedding soup, you need to throw this out. This is no good. It's full of sodium and all preservatives. So I'm here today to show you how to make the real deal. So everybody has loved Italian wedding soup for years. And the old wives tale is that, are we starting already? What is this? The minute he knows he's not here right now. He has a belly rub tracker. I said no belly rub. <laughs> anyway, um, back to the soup track. Um, it is not used at weddings. People have that um, idea that, you know, it's served classically at Italian weddings. Of course, in America, you could serve it, you know, with your wedding, but that's not really necessary. And that's not what it means either. Um, matrimonio in um, Italian means to marry. And um, that's basically what the soup does. Because you use like bitter greens with it, along with a sweet meat and nice herbs. So it marries together, and the longer that happens, the better it gets. It's supposed to be like marriage, right? All right, so I'm going to get my pasta started. And this is the way I make my Italian wedding soup. A lot of people put the pasta in it and let it go. But being in the restaurant, we always boil our pasta separate so we can put it in as needed. Otherwise, it gets soggy. It soaks up all of the broth. So you can go ahead and you can make your pasta on its own. And this is pretty. She just never saw this. <laughs> okay, so this is Dittolini. And you can buy this anywhere. Um, this is like a classic pasta that we use in Italian wedding. Also, you can use um, a chini di pepe, which is like the small little um, balls that they come. Um, I know Di Checco, that brand, puts it out. And um, that's, that's very, very classic in Italian wedding. But when you can find, whatever you can find is good. You know, always say, make it your own. So even if you only have elbow macaroni, use that. I'm going to put that over there. So this actually takes two parts. While that's going, we have to make a soup part and we have to make the meatball part. So this is the recipe. I sat on the couch this morning with a cup of coffee and I wrote all this down. And I know it looks like a lot, but it's really not. And it's really already a lot of things that you should already have in your refrigerator. So everybody basically knows how to make meatballs. And then this is the soup part of it. So we're going to go ahead and get started with those. And um, we got a bowl, so we're going to put our, um, I'm going to go ahead and put a little olive oil in this pan. This is our big soup pot here now. And I'm going to put it on medium high and just do like two swirls around for two tablespoons of oil. Okay. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the meat in here. So the meat calls for a half a pound of ground beef and a half a, ground, a pound of ground pork. So that's what I have here. But if you shop, this is the pork and this is the ground beef. So if you shop at like some stores, I wanted to, I wanted to save this and show you guys because sometimes they have this really good mix um, called a meatloaf mix and it has beef, veal, and pork. So it's the three in one. And I mean, you're getting all three of the, of the greatest meats right there together. Beef, veal, and pork. Uh, it's all mixed together. So if you wanted to just use this, you could. So it's a half a pound of beef and a half a pound of pork. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in a mixing bowl. And then we're going to do one egg. And I already went ahead, I'm gonna kinda mix this down in here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put an egg in there. And I already went ahead and beat it. It's just one egg. You get one of your spatulas here. And get all that out. Okay, and then we're going to um, go ahead and put in a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. And if you don't have the kind that you know you actually grate, um, you know, on the box grater, it's fine to just go ahead and use one that you can find in the store. I'm very partial to 4C because um, if we didn't grate cheese with my Nana, as she got older, um, she would always buy 4C. And I just, I love the smell of it because this is Parmesan and Romano mix. So it's two different cheeses. It's wonderful. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and pour the cheese in here and it's a half of a cup. And this is what's really gonna give this meatball a lot, a lot of flavor. So we're gonna put that there. Now we're gonna do one teaspoon of minced garlic. Now I've just got these cute little mixing spoons here. Half a teaspoon. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in as well. And then the next thing is a half a cup of breadcrumbs. 
And I went and I bought the Italian um, seasoned kind because the more flavor for me, the better. So again, I like Progresso, but any flavor, you know, that you want. I'm a creature of habit. You know, this was my Nana's. That's what she used, so that's what I'm using. Whoops. Okay, we're going to put in a little salt and pepper. So I'm going to go around a little bit with that. And we're going to put in this beautiful tricolored pepper that we have. We're getting down there, huh? Slowly. Slowly. How's my uh, pasta over there? Good. Boiling away. Boiling away. It doesn't take long, and you want to keep it al dente, because when you put it in the broth, it's going to cook a little more, and you don't want it super mushy. Okay, and then we're going to put in some fresh basil. So this is, um, it calls for parsley, like a regular typical one, but I'm a basil fanatic. And this, I feel, gives it a lot of flavor. So I'm going to go ahead. Now, I wanted to move this out of the way because I wanted to show you this beautiful cutting board I'm working on today. This um, was just brought to me um, by, he used to work with us. His name is Michael Kaup. And he owns a company called Rustic Avenue Design. Mm -hmm. Mike worked with us. He was a great addition to our team. Um, he, you know, moved on into woodworking because you see that's his specialty. But he actually made me this um, cutting board, and I'm in love with it. So I've gotten a lot of um, compliments at the restaurant with it and everything. So I wanted to just kind of give him a little shout out, and um, so that you could see it. If anybody's interested in it, you know, Mike would be happy. Happy, happy to make one. Um, he does have a Facebook page and stuff. And um, each little piece is like hand done by itself. So it's it's beautiful work by him. Okay, so now I'm just going to kind of mix this all together. And I really, uh, I need to take my rings off, which I should have done earlier, because I need to use these tools. That was not gonna come off. I don't know if it's ever gonna come off. Okay. So when you work with meat, you just want to fold everything over like this because if you um, work your meat too much, these meatballs come very, very um, tough. So you always just want to, thank you. There we go. And everything's getting mixed within. Drop the little piece there. I bet you love to get your mouth around this right now, huh? <laughs> He's actually... Like he's going to sleep. He's probably mad at me because I didn't give him a belly rub. All right. So this is all mixed through, as you can see, all the herbs. And the and the basil like that is like a telltale sign when everything's mixed through. Because, you know, that'll just let you know that it's throughout all of the meat. Okay. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and we're going to just make a few of these little meatballs. And you can make them as big as you want now. Um, traditionally... They are so tiny, they're like this. They're really, really tiny. Um, if you wanted to make them bigger, a little bit more at the restaurant, that's what we have. They're like this. Turn that down. But you, one thing's for sure, you wanna make them all the same. So how many of you have never rolled a meatball? I mean, it, it's just a part of life, rolling meatballs. So you just keep on a rolling, keep on a rolling. Very, very, very um, satisfying to me. You can sit in a chair and roll meatballs forever. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna roll a couple of these. I just wanna show you guys how to go and make the rest of them. So what you would do now when you, this is gonna make a lot of meatballs. So you're gonna have a lot of soup here. And the good thing about this soup is that you can freeze it. So you can go ahead and you can make your meatballs, make the broth, make the whole soup. You can even double the recipe. This way you are sure to um, be able to freeze half of it for another day. Just put it in a freezer tight container and um, you're ready to go. So I'm just gonna roll a couple more here and then I'm gonna put them in this pot that I had already put the oil in. And let me just go ahead and wash my hands. I've got all the schmucks under my nails. That's why you don't have long nails when you cook. Well, I've had them since I was 18, and I had the big hair going and everything. So for me, it's a part of me. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna put these meatballs in here. They're not on the burner. I know I pulled it off a little bit. And we're just gonna brown them. 
And that's all you want to do. You don't want to cook these through because they're going to finish actually cooking in the broth. So, um, but we're going to actually make the soup in this same pot. How's our pasta? Mm. It's perfect. Did we turn this off? Yep. Okay. So these are browning up, and again, they're only going to take a couple minutes to turn this down. You've got some great power on this stove. I can tell you. Maybe once I get my new stove, it won't take me so long to cook anymore. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a couple of these and show you guys. Oh, it smells so good. It really smells really divine. A couple of these. See, they're all browned already on the outside, which is what you want. And then while we're getting ready, we're letting those brown up a little bit. Don't you just want to take one out of that pot and eat it? Yes. Um, we have all the uh, other ingredients here for the rest of the um, recipe. We have our chicken broth, we have carrots, we have onion, we have celery, which I'm going to dice for you guys. I choose um, kale. I'm on like a kale kick lately. I don't know why. I love it. It seems to hold up better in soups anyway, because once you put the spinach in, two seconds later, it's very wilty. So the kale holds up really, really good. I got my fresh parsley and basil here, garlic. So I am set to go and make this um, broth for you guys, which I want to show you. So these are pretty much um, brown. I'm just going to take them out. And like I said, they're not finished. They're um, still um, pink in the inside. But I just wanted to show you how to make them. So you have this recipe. And we're going to put them back in in just a minute. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put... When you put carrots, celery, and onions together, in any recipe, it's called a mirepoix. Um, it's the base for like most soups and sauces. And it gives everything such a good flavor together. So this is one and a half cups of carrots. Now, I went ahead and I bought them already shredded. So you can also use, um, get your own and dice them up. And here is the onion. Again, one and a half cups. And notice I didn't put any oil in here because I already had the oil from when I put in the meatballs. And now we have like these brown bits on the bottom, which hold like a lot of flavor. So we're gonna just let that go for five minutes. We're going to dice our celery. This is one thing I could not find cut in the store, so I couldn't cheat. But it's always good to get your skills in there. Now this is the heart of the celery, which I love the most because this is where all the flavor is in these leaves. And it's my all-time favorite part of the celery. I don't like the big outer ones. I usually use them for making like broth and stuff. So line them up. That's the best way to do it. Line them up. Take your um, knife and just rock like this with them continually, bringing your fingers back. And then when you get closer, you go against your knuckles. But we're going to get all of these amazing green leaves and that's going to give this soup so much flavor. Okay, so then we're just going to kind of give them a rough chop here. And again, it's, this is going to come out to like a cup and a half. And we're just going to put those in. I love celery leaves. I love celery. It's my favorite part about getting wings. And nobody else likes them, so it works out well. You don't even like celery, do you? No. I love it. I'm a carrot, carrot gal. Carrot gal. Well, these are not really big enough to snack on, no. so. Do you smell this already? Uh-huh. It's great, isn't it? Okay, so now when these are cooking like this, you want to go ahead and you want to put a little salt and pepper in because the salt makes the vegetables sweat out all their liquid, which in turn lets them cook faster. So you always want to salt and pepper and season your vegetables when they are sauteing like this. Because they'll take in everything that you're putting in this pot. It will, it will take in with the vegetable. And this is such a classic soup. Like, we have people ask for this soup all the time. I think if I made this soup every day at the restaurant, we would sell out every day. People just love it. Mmm. Smells good. Yeah. Okay. So the next is we're going to put in the um, chicken broth. 
Now the recipe, this recipe is like for like maybe a small family. But I'm so used to cooking for he, like the restaurant that it's hard for me to scale things down. So, mm -hmm. still waiting. <laughs> this is um, chicken broth. It's low sodium. Of course, if you had homemade chicken broth, that would be so much better. But um, if you don't have the time to do that, then you can just put in one of these containers. This is a 32 ounce. And I'm actually going to put in two of these. You don't have to for your own. There we go. But I'm going to bring this with me. This way. I'm going to turn it up so we can get it to boil. There we go. Okay, so that's all in there. This is the chicken broth. And once it comes up to a boil, pasta's done, right? Mm -hmm. That's turned off. We probably, we could strain it, but, um, and put it in a different pot, but we can put it right in here and serve it up. So this is going here now. This is off. So it's the broth, it's the mirepoix. Um, we're gonna put a little garlic in it, just like a little for flavoring here. Just like a half a teaspoon. It's like all things Italian in here. And I'm going to go ahead and put even basil in here because I love the flavor that it adds to the broth. It adds a little bit of um, freshness and sweetness to it. Um, ask my cooks in the back. When, they, when I go back, I'm like, did you put basil in there? Did you put basil in there? Like they just, I think I did on their nerves, but that's, what every, that's why everything tastes so good with us. Okay, so we're just gonna cut these up. Okay, I'm gonna throw that in as well. And also it calls for a half a cup of Parmesan again. So we're gonna go ahead, and this is gonna make this sauce, I'm gonna lighten these up because they're stuck in here. This is the half right here. And this is gonna make the soup um, very flavorful and it's gonna give it like a little bit of a creamy touch to it. It's still gonna have that nice chicken broth. We're gonna pour that in. We're gonna stir. Track star. <laughs> okay. So this is what your broth should be looking at, looking like at this point. It's got all of its seasonings in it. It's got the carrots, onions, and celery. And you want to bring this up to a boil. This always happens to me now. It does. Oh, there we go. And then um, you want to put your meatballs back in. So we only have a couple here to put in. I'm just going to, and they're going to basically cook in this broth the rest of the way through. And then they're going to get, that's when the, the matrimonial part comes. Because you're putting um, all that luscious meat in here with these greens and all that goodness with the cheese and the basil. And then on top of it, you want the very end when it's boiling, which I'm trying to get it to that point, but I might not be able to show you this. You want to take a um, handful of kale or spinach and just put it in here and um, it'll add like more of a flavor. Just go ahead and add your kale in there. Keep this going. You bring it up to a boil and then a simmer. Look at all the fresh um, colors in here. It's really beautiful. I'm trying to find a meatball that I have. Here we go. And they will continue to cook in here. Um, and then when this is all done, um, once it's boiled and you know, it's probably about 10 minutes out of boil it and that would finish off the meatballs. And then you take your pasta and then you just put it in. So this is done and it's al dente, which means it's still got like a lot of bite to it because you don't want it mushy because it's going to go in here. So say you didn't want to eat all this today and you said, well, if I put, you know, I want to save some for tomorrow or I want it soup for all week. You don't want to put the pasta all the way in. You want to keep it separate. And that's what we do at the restaurant. We keep our pasta separate and as someone orders a bowl, we put the pasta in the bowl and then the soup and then we mix it. Because otherwise this will become very, very thick because the pasta will suck up all the broth and become mushy and you won't get that great flavor. So remember that if you don't want to eat it all in one day. If you're going to eat it all in one day and you're serving it for your family, pour the pasta in. And then that would be the time to freeze it also. So it's cooking in the pot here. I just wanted to show you a little bit more. The meatballs are going to cook through. We've got our kale, our 
um, celery and onions and the carrots and our garlic and Parmesan cheese and it just smells so beautiful and when it's done then you can just pour yourself a big bowl of it and, um, and put it in a nice piece of crusty bread and, glass of wine, and you got yourself a meal. If you're a soup eater this is going to be great for you. So remember don't buy this, make this, look how quick it was and it's a lot healthier. You guys have a great weekend and enjoy your soup. It's, a, it's soup season. If you want a bowl, come to Amici's tonight.